The Maryland football road during the Terrapins' great 1978 season ended with their postseason trip to exciting El Paso, Texas and the world-famous Sun Bowl. Hi, this is Susie. We want to welcome all of you Maryland Terrapins to El Paso. We want you to have a really good time. The Sun Bowl had long had its eyes on Maryland as a potential visitor to this prestigious postseason game. Richard Pearson from the Sun Bowl Selection Committee was a gracious host and explains why Maryland was chosen. Well, firstly, Maryland has a class operation. Uh, I first met Jerry Claiborne at the ACC conference. Jerry Claiborne impressed us very much because he runs a really, really nice operation. It's a bunch of great kids and they have a good football program. Maryland comes from a major metropolitan area and, you know, they play great football. We have the two university schools of two major states, you know, Texas and Maryland. Six bowl games in six consecutive seasons is the hallmark of a quality football program. Head coach Jerry Claiborne could savor this reward for the Terrapins' enduring football excellence. Well, the number one reason is that it means that you have just completed a successful season and that you are one of the top football teams in the country. I think it's also good for uh, recruiting. It's good for your football tradition. It's good for your fan participation, it's good for your players because you get an opportunity to uh, usually visit another part of the country and uh, in a more relaxed atmosphere than your normal regular season games are, are played. I think this is the type of thing that, you know, you really look forward to at the end of the season, is that you have played well enough, you're ranked well enough nationally, that the people who are on the bowl selection committees look at your university and say, hey, we would like to have you participate in our bowl. Postseason games are meant to be a time for football fun, an award for the grueling hours in practice which produce success on Saturday. National television transports the action all across the continent. In the postseason, there are individual awards for excellence on the field, or in the case of Maryland defensive end Joe Muffler, for excellence in the classroom. Muffler was a super student as well as a tough defender and was named an academic All-American. 
On a brisk, windy afternoon, the Terrapins enjoyed limited success against the rapidly peaking Texas Longhorns. Quarterback Tim O'Hare shot the leather to Gary Ellis in one of the moments when O'Hare could elude pressure. The Maryland defensive line was tough all year. Bruce Palmer nails the Horn quarterback for a loss of three. The other half of the Terrapins' twin senior defensive line tears, All-American tackle Charlie Johnson finds success on his side of the line. Dean Richards, always a handful for any defense, shakes loose in the Longhorn secondary for a substantial pickup. Burley Steve Atkins was named as a marked man all day, but he still managed to leg the football for eight yards. But the swift Texas backfield had too many Olympic speed sprinters, such as Lamb Jones, who sped 32 yards for a score in Texas Sun Bowl victory. The University of Maryland isn't just a major learning center, it's one of the very best, one of the top universities in the world, a member of the educational elite. Maryland is located in the heartland of the exciting eastern seaboard, crossing the important Washington-Baltimore corridor, just minutes away from both major cities. College Park itself is a bright focal point for college life. The Maryland campus, long regarded as one of the most beautiful in the country, is still growing, always glowing and vibrant. With its prime location, outstanding facilities, and rich student mix, Maryland is truly next door to the world. Tulane University opens Maryland's season with visions of upset. The Green Wave was rapidly rebuilding, and Maryland was an as yet unknown quantity. But before the 1978 football season was 15 minutes old, Maryland had tormented Tulane, and the Green Wave had subsided to a ripple. Quarterback Tim O'Hare didn't emerge as a starter until his senior season. The nifty left-hander made the most of his opportunity, beginning with his 14-yard aerial to tight end Eric Seaver. Smooth striding punt returner Lloyd Burris helped the first quarter touchdown barrage with this well-paved run for 47 yards. The Terrapins led 14 to nothing after just 15 minutes of play. Steve Atkins was a preseason selection for all conference and national honors. Atkins begins his record-shattering year with a thundering run like this 12-yard jaunt. 265-pound tackle Charlie Johnson was another preseason pick for defensive lineman honors. You'll get no argument from the Tulane quarterback. Steve Atkins gained 110 yards against Tulane. Atkins' ability to break tackles was a prime reason for the Terrapins' overland success. For quarterback Tim O'Hare, it was a smooth, steady start. Hitting on seven of 11 passes and a pair of scores. This one a beautifully executed 15-yard strike to Alvin Preacher Maddox. Final, Maryland 31 to lane 7. Maryland's first road trip is to the University of Louisville. The Cardinals' converted baseball park was packed with the biggest football crowd in Louisville Red Rage history. For football fundamentalists, the game was to be labeled a hitter. The hitting began with a kickoff. The inspired Red Rage recovered an opening play fumble, capitalizing on superb field position, jarred the Terrapins with a score in less than two minutes of play. But Maryland tailback Steve Atkins proves to be a key factor in the crucial early going with his power running. Atkins picks up 15 yards on the left side. At halftime, Louisville leads 7-3. In the third period, the Terrapin offense begins to roll. Still trailing 7-3, Maryland capped a 65-yard drive with this 45-yard aerial maneuver from O'Hare to Dean Richards. The Red Rage reclaimed the lead again in the seesaw skirmish. Tim O'Hare, facing a third and 15 situation, hits Jan Carinci for 19 yards to keep the drive alive. With a minute and a half to go, the Terrapin score the winning touchdown on Preacher Maddox's tackle-defying three-yard run. At Chapel Hill, North Carolina, on a soggy Saturday, Maryland opened its Atlantic Coast Conference title bid. Carolina was favored to win this game, not by much. But Maryland wins, and not by much either, in another 60-minute shootout. The first quarter was half over when Steve Atkins struck for 36 of the 162 yards he gained on this day. With deceptive speed harnessed to obvious power, Atkins was impossible to handle in this scoring scamper. Maryland's Bruce Palmer, a demon defender all year, tracked down the heel quarterback for an 11-yard sack. Preacher Maddox averaged four and a half yards per carry on a heavy turf. At the end of this pitch out, Maddox used his marvelous change of pace to journey for 19 more. One of the great receptions of this season came on a third and 28 situation. 
with the Tar Heels leading late in the third period. Quarterback Tim O'Hare goes to Gary Ellis and gets the exact 28 necessary yards to keep the Terrapin offense on the field. Finally, Steve Atkins clinched the win with a seven-yard run in this 21-20 thriller, helped in large part by Ed Carr's free field goal. If Maryland was becoming a team with character, the character was a reflection of the successful blending of player skills and intense coaching attention. Jerry Claiborne explains that mix. All right, now, men, thinking about that ACC championship, thinking about Maryland Pride, thinking about being the best in the country. Think about it. But we're just very proud of this football team. It was a group of young men who had a purpose and went out and played just outstanding football. I felt like at any time we received an injury, somebody stepped front and center and took over and took up the slack. Good hand off, Steve. Good hand off. Good hand. Look in. When you're looking to put together a coaching staff, I think the number one thing you look for in a person is his loyalty because I feel like that uh, because you do have to work so closely together and and be a part of a team that you must be loyal to one another and loyal to your school, to your, to your players, uh, to your program. All right, that's where the ball through, Bill. Good shot. And I think that they should be able to get across to the players, number one, the value of an education and the value of, of going to class and and uh, getting good grades because uh, the four years that they spend here at the University of Maryland is going to be a very short time of their life. And while they're here, they should be preparing to actually make a place for themselves when they get out and be able to support a family and make a living and earn a living. And I think this is important that they try to help get this across to the players. Second and six, second and six. Let's go north right and left, sea man, north right and left, sea man. Senior wingback Dean Richards set school records and earned honors in his four outstanding years at College Park. His football experience at Maryland brings some frank Dean Richards reflections. Coach Claiborne, he's really helped me a lot as far as uh, calming down from when I first came to college. I was pretty wild and had to start abiding by his rules and that just sort of like helped me settle down a lot. So I got challenged by Coach Claiborne when I was when I first met him, he asked me if I thought I could play here, and I told him yes, and I just wanted to prove to myself that I could play here. Well, we have we have great facilities here. We have Olympic weights. They've helped me get a lot stronger. When I first came here, I could I could only bench press, but I think it was 225. Now I can bench about 325. And just got a couple of novice machines for our legs. They just help you out out on the field. I wasn't a firm believer of weights when I first came here, but now I definitely think that helped you a lot. On a magnificent late September afternoon, Maryland renews an old rivalry with Southeastern Conference power Kentucky. The Terrapins are steadily moving up in the national rankings, and again this day, they don't disappoint. Second quarter action. Maryland faces third down, eating 20 yards. Tim O'Hare looks for the sure-handed Jan Carinci. Carinci pulls it in, completing a 24-yard play. A scoreless first half deadlock is broken by Steve Atkins' power running. Atkins has just picked up 19 yards in the pass reception. He journeys for 16 more on the ground. Atkins is durable. On an afternoon when he carried the ball 31 times, Atkins makes the draw work. Behind magnificent blocking, Atkins motors for 22 yards. When the Cats had the ball, the Maryland front wall manufactured relentless pressure. Here, Jimmy Shaver goes after the quarterback. Next, Charlie Johnson and Keith Calder combined for a sack that nets Kentucky an unlucky 13 yards on the minus side. And then the offensive clincher. Sprinting Donnie Dotter legs the ball wide, spots tight end Tom Burgess, puts six more points on the board. Statistics show Steve Atkins with 153 yards, Kentucky with just 42. Final score, Maryland 20, Kentucky 3. The second conference clash brings the North Carolina State Wolfpack to College Park. It's homecoming on the Maryland campus, always a special date. This homecoming offers Maryland a chance to reinforce its conference lead and increase national attention in Maryland's direction. The Terrapins wasted no time. In its first possession, Maryland moved 53 yards in 10 plays, using five minutes perfectly. Preacher Maddox pulling his way eight yards in for the payoff. Brian Matera and Neil Okowitz head of the linebacker corps. Matera nails the Wolfpack core with a strong move. One of the great runs in all of college football in 1978 set the Bird Stadium crowd of 46,000 rocking. 
With Maryland leading 10 to 7, Steve Atkins takes the following kickoff. The rest is history, as crisp blocking and Atkins flying feet flip for 98 yards on the longest kickoff return of the year. After Atkins' score, State takes the Maryland kickoff, but the fired-up Terrapins keep the homecoming crowd on its feet when Terrapin defender Todd Benson makes the contact and Steve Trimble recovers the fumble for another score, the second Terrapin tally in 25 seconds. Two minutes after his mercurial 98-yard kickoff return, Steve Atkins has his breath again, and what follows will take yours away. From his own 13-yard line, Atkins carries the football and much of the state team on this 50-yard excursion. In the fourth quarter, Maryland ices the homecoming win. This nine-yard flip to Gary Ellis ensures the fifth win in a row. It's 31 to seven, Maryland, and homecoming couldn't be sweeter. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lending expert direction to Maryland's cheerleaders, pom-pom girls, and flag team is talented Lander McConkey, who describes how Maryland's superior sideline shows achieve that polish. Seven, eight, okay. As far as the squads are concerned, we, we feel that they're an elite group because of the tryout procedures that they have to go through. Hey, I want you to head, sharply turn, and pop out down together, okay? We want them to act just as a normal student, yet in the capacity of, you know, thinking squad, thinking organization. We cannot allow them to be on the squad thinking, me, what are you going to give me, selfishly. You know, they have, they're there because they want to do for the squad and they want to make the squad better, but they're and they want to support that team, okay? Basketball team, football team, whoever they can get out and support, that's, that's why they're there. They realize that the only reason they are there is because of the athletic team. They try to, you know, they try to get involved, you know, with the different people. They try to talk to the coaches, you know, so that they have a better feel for who, who they're cheering for instead of, well, that's, you know, a whole bunch of guys out there that we don't even know. They do try to, try to learn the names and understand, you know, who they're cheering for and why they're out there cheering. And it, I don't know, it gives, a, gives them a better feeling, and it, you can tell that feeling as far as being a fan. That's the whole idea behind cheerleading, palms, and flags, is the unit. If one looks bad, the rest look bad, you know, it's not, oh, uh, well, that person looked really good out there. It's the squad looks really good, you see, and it, it all, it's all based on that unit. You know, if the squad feels that unity amongst themselves, there's a drive behind them that won't quit. The undefeated Terrapins next visit Syracuse in ancient Archbold Stadium. The threat of snow hangs over Syracuse. More important to the Orange is a five-game losing string to Maryland, and the Orange feels confident this year they can spring an upset. But for the first 30 minutes, the Terrapins are literally as cold as the weather. Only spirited defensive plays like Marlon Van Horn's brilliant move in the quarterback provides encouragement. A neat toss to Steve Atkins for 22 yards generates the semblance of offense for the temporarily stymie Terrapins. Dean Richards is always a long threat from anywhere on the field. A flip from Tim O'Hare to Richards gobbles up 27 yards. Now with the orange getting peeled, Donnie Dotter catches the Syracuse defense in a lean and goes 23 yards to register the first touchdown and put the Terrapins irretrievably ahead. On the next possession, the Terrapins go 59 yards with fullback Mickey Dudish's 15-yard power run payoff, adding to the touchdown total. Proving it pays to hustle, the Terrapin defensive unit turns to offense. Lloyd Burris blocks that field goal try by the Orange. Joe Muffer retrieves the ball, runs and runs and runs some more, 75 yards in all, setting up the final score of the day. The resilient Terrapins dominate the second half and win 24 to nine. By mid-October, the undefeated Terrapins are rolling with Wake Forest the next home and conference guest. In addition to the Deacons, 6,000 musicians from regional high schools fill Bird Stadium with marvelous music on band day. Wake Forest's new look offense suffers an early shock when Lloyd Burris pops up in front of an errant Deacon toss and flies 43 yards before being collared on the 19.
Alvin Maddox displays some of his fine climax running. Pitch out in hand, Maddox rips the right side for 18 yards. Then the preacher hits for the toughest yards in football. The final two for a score. Shot up on the ground, the Deacons go back to the air. Maryland cornerback Sammy Johnson floats in the way of a pass, returning the intercepted ball 19 yards. Finally, six foot seven inch Mike Tice, tallest quarterback in Maryland history, finds Alvin Maddox for the second of Maddox's three touchdowns on this 30 yard strike. Final score, Maryland 39, Wake nothing, and win number seven. Coach Tommy Groom has spent most of his football career with Jerry Claiborne, first as a player and later as an assistant coach, a position he really valued. The number one reason why we bring kids into the University of Maryland is so that they get an education and so that they will go on, get, receive their degree, and be productive members of society. Coach Claiborne always uh, wants us to coach that young man just as if he was our own son. If we approach that young man in that vein, then we're not going to do anything to abuse him, to embarrass him. We're going to make things available to him just like his father. We're going to bring him up, raise him in our family. We will spend more time with this young man throughout the next four years while he's attending the University of Maryland than any other group of people. We have a strong, strong moral obligation that we are going to raise this young man in our university environment to where when he finishes, he is going to be an outstanding class individual. The Terrapins' 1978 performance is spotless, and the undefeated string is at 11 as Maryland faces ACC rival Duke. It's another walk on the water at aptly named Wade Stadium on a rainy, soggy Saturday. Football specialty teams can be game breakers themselves. Lloyd Burris, Terrapin punt runner Deluxe, turns in the longest conference return of the year with his 56-yard beauty, setting up Maryland's initial touchdown. Three plays later, Steve Atkins jets over the goal line to add to the early lead. Jan Carinci, the Canadian cruiser, shows excellent balance on a 13-yard run with a short screen. On heavy turf, Steve Atkins power plunges for three yards and a second touchdown on his three-touchdown day. Marlon Van Horn finds the footing no problem, dumps the Duke quarterback for an 11-yard loss. Duke goes to the air 40 times, giving the Terrapin secondary a lot of work. Safety John Baldotti plays the receiver first, then the ball, and comes up with a sparkling interception. Defensive end Joe Muffler keeps up the Terrapin pressure with a 15-yard sack. The Terrapins win number 9, 27 to nothing over the Blue Devils. National television followed Maryland into State College, Pennsylvania. The host Penn State Nittany Lions and visiting Terrapins were both ranked well up in the top 10 and looking forward to being number one. Dean Richards has been particularly effective against the Penn State secondary. Tim O'Hare finds Richards for 34 yards in a day when the supercharged Lions play one of their finest games of the season. Rangy Mike Tice also finds Richards an inviting target, striking for 19 more yards and another first down. Charlie Johnson's steady, relentless play up front made him a top choice lineman of the year for the Terrapins. Chuck Cusina felt Johnson's iron grip on this five-yard sack. It's Johnson again, freeing himself from the blockers and coming up with a quarterback eight yards behind the line. But it was State's day to prevail, sending Maryland to its first defeat of the season. Maryland bounced back from the initial loss with a conference win over Virginia. The Cavaliers had hoped to find the Terrapins down after the tremendous effort of the previous week. It took the Terrapins some time to get going. The Cavaliers struck for the first score. Virginia's strategy involved a running offense with infrequent passing. The run and the pass were blended on this quarterback option, but Steve Trimble shows excellent recognition as the Terrapin defensive back comes up with the interception. Maryland quarterback Tim O'Hare's 220 yards passing included this 30-yard hummer to fleet-flying Dean Richards. Steve Atkins finds the AstroTurf footing to his liking on this 17-yard jaunt through a gaping left side gap. Tight end Eric Sievers' 6'4", 230 is an inviting target for another O'Hare aerial. 
top line defender again is Marlon Van Horn, who measures the Cavalier quarterback for a minus 10 on this inside power move late in the fourth quarter. And the Terrapins win number nine when Preacher Maddox goes four yards off the left side in a 17-7 Maryland victory. And so the conference championship comes down to the final Saturday of the year. Maryland at home against nationally ranked Clemson with 52,000 partisans cramming Bird Stadium in what Jerry Claiborne called one of football's biggest games. It was a very gratifying season to be able to be playing for the championship in the final game of the season against Clemson. And this was a thing that we, another one of the goals that as a team we had set and I think that we wanted to win back the ACC title that we had had for three years and lost the year before. So this was one of the things that we really wanted to do, and it was a bitter disappointment when we lost in a, what I thought was a great football game to Clemson University. But again, as uh, some of the facts that you learn in life, that uh, you work hard, you strive, you prepare, and yet sometimes you do not reach the goals that you set. But the fact that we did come so far and we're competing for the championship on the final game of the season was a real tribute to this football team.